Philo T. Farnsworth was a genius. He not only invented television, he figured out what it was good for. In the 1920s, he said, television is a gift from God, and God will hold us accountable for how we use it. Thirty years later, he said, there's nothing worthwhile on TV, and I'm not going to have one in my house. I first saw television in 1948. A bunch of men crowded around a fuzzy green screen watching what they said was boxing. I couldn't make it out. I didn't see any point in it. But I was wrong. Three years later, everybody had one, including my family. My younger brother and sister would sit transfixed by the Howdy Doody show for kids. I thought it was so awful. Ah! that I fled the living room into my bedroom to do homework instead of be with that. TV programming in the 50s was adapted from radio. Made sense, it was the same owners. Staples that had worked for 30 years were Western shoot 'em ups bang, 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 and cop shows, where good always triumphed over evil, and it did so in 30 minutes. There were musical variety shows celebrating true love forevermore and the betrayal of true love when one of the partners didn't live up to the expectations. That was 1950s morality. They said television would be the best thing for the world. It would bring the world's best educators into the classroom for our children. It would bring a high culture into the American household. It would make the politi political process clear to the average voter. Right. People didn't want high culture. Kids reject educational television like they reject medicine or broccoli. And the one time that they tried bringing the political process into the American home was a disaster. They broadcast the 1952 presidential conventions where the, the Republicans nominated Eisenhower, the Democrats Stevenson. I watched it. It was boring TV. It frightened the hell out of the politicians. They didn't want people to see how things were done in politics. By 1960, they'd fixed all that. When John F. Kennedy ran against Richard Nixon, there was a famous debate between the two men, televised for all of America, also broadcast on radio and covered by print. I read the print summary. I thought Nixon won that debate pretty easily. The radio audience did too. But the TV audience thought Kennedy won. You see, Kennedy's rich daddy had hired the best TV people to make his boy look like a president. So they had him in a nice suit, suntanned, looking very presidential. And the looks won the day. It's not what he said. That's the way politics has worked ever since. Well, by 1960, the TV owners were filthy rich, and they got a little tired of broadcasting traditional American morality. They decided that they needed to remake their audience to uplift the American people. They took a picture and they said, who is our average viewer? Look, and he came into focus, and it was Simple Ivan, Ivan Durak, whom they knew from the old country, where they saw him as stupid, ignorant, and kept that way by the vodka that their cousins continued to sell him. In America, it changed a little bit. Instead of Simple Ivan, it was Simple Homer. Stupid, ignorant, and kept that way by the broadcast news that they fed him. And they set about to try to improve 
simple Homer. Through TV, they showed him, hey Homer, look at this black guy playing a chief executive who knows how to do things. Isn't he cool? Hey Homer, look at this career woman. She owns her own company. She looks stylish and she's very effective and here's the men doing what she wants. Isn't she cool? Hey Homer, look at this immigrant. Came to America, working hard, doing things the American way, and American success. Isn't he cool? Hey Homer, look at this single mom, doing it all by herself, without any husband, and making it work. Isn't she cool? Hey Homer, look at these gay people, They're clever and witty. Aren't they just the coolest thing ever? Hey, Homer, you know what? Everybody's cool except you. So why don't you move aside a little bit and make room for these cool people? Well, the amazing thing about that message is that it worked. Simple Homer did move aside, did rather graciously give in to all sorts of things to improve the lot of all the cool people. He didn't get much gratitude for it. TV kept up the message. They invented music TV, much more about TV than music, where they thrust interracial sex, they thrust gay people, they thrust gyrations and sex on stage into Homer's face. And if Homer didn't like it, sometimes he didn't, and started to say, but, 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 but we don't believe in that. They'd say, Homer, you're not cool. And they'd say, Homer, you're a racist, sexist, xenophobic, homophobic, bigoted, anti-Semitic, blah, 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 blah. And they would convince all the cool people, who was the rest of their audience, that that was the way it was. Homer pretty much learned to keep his mouth shut. But the people who own TV really don't like Homer. They don't like Simple Ivan. They really want him to go extinct. And they're encouraging him. They portray parenthood as kind of a bad thing with a shrewish, manipulating wife and clever children always getting their way over poor, stupid dad. So they don't encourage people to have kids. In fact, they actively get in the way. I'll speak to this from personal experience. Whenever I felt a certain urge to reproduce, seemed like the woman in question always had some must-watch TV, from Star Trek to Friends to Sex in the City. Ironically. Anyhow, the TV people really don't want us to reproduce. What they want us to do is to go gently to extinction and waste our money on the products they're advertising on our way. That doesn't sound like much of an attractive program to me. I'll go back to Philo T. Farnsworth, recommend you do the same, simple Homer. Ivan Durak, Homer Simpson, whoever you are. There's nothing worthwhile on television. Turn the damn thing off.